Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I think the, each of us will give a short presentation. So I will share with you how the journey, what we have been doing for the industrial AI. Uh, people may say, well, AI, industrial AI, what's the difference? Well, AI is a cognitive science, has been there for over five decades. But the uh, industrial AI uh, is a system engineering, which means when you develop something, when you deploy them, you do it, I do it, result should be the same if I use the same data. So, in, in, so eventually we have to be able to drive this because uh, for engineering companies, develop design products and deploy in the field. Doesn't matter if robotics or machinery or EV or satellite or a uh, factory, right? You have to be able to, to deploy them. So first I'll give a quick industrial trends. Also the, the, the journey that we have gone through and some of the uh, lesson learned. I think the trend here, you can, you can see that uh, obviously uh, from the consumer product, we learned great lesson, right? From the smartphone business, how things changed the way we live the way we social, the way we interconnect. And in industry, the digital transformation is the currently going on. We're connecting people, things, and management system three together. So that's called digital transformation. So eventually we're using the lesson learned from consumer electronics, but extended to IoT industrial AI. So the company like Foscom basically, and it used to be an EMS company, and make products and eventually will become joint design and integrate design and technology manufacturing and services together. So uh, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to uh, engage with Foxconn. So uh, I currently am on leave from university to serve as a vice chairman. Mm -hmm. so, so basically from the journey here, you can tell the first point we define what is the industrial system, right? In terms of intelligent automation, intelligence and digital. Well, automation is uh, to the system to do people don't want to do, like boring, dirty, dark, right? And, or people don't do well. I want, I have a hundred holes to inspect. I cannot do it, right? But I can do it, but it's not fast enough. But intelligence system is to do people cannot do. For example, I want you to tell me hundred holes dimension, eyes cannot tell, but machine vision can tell. Now, digital system, what's the definition? It's one sentence. It's to human using data to make decisions. Today, most of us still using experience to make decisions. So obviously, we have a journey to give that infrastructure to do it. So by doing that, obviously, in, uh, uh, in a space, I call this a visible versus invisible. If I take a visible space of an engine system, engineering system, an invisible system, we tend to solve the problem first, then we move to avoidance space, right? We move to avoidance. But unfortunately, in the invisible space, there are a lot of things you don't see. That's why when medical like us, we have to go to x-ray, MRI, we test blood, because doctors want to see those invisible data, not just look at your face and, uh, and uh, weight you, right? That's, you diagnostic your face cannot do too much. So eventually, that needs data. Engineering system need data as well. So how do you get data to find invisible problem? Then from the relationship with the others and the previous case studies, previous uh, problems, you can avoid them based on relationship. So this chart actually a, a, a describe a very strategic way how we solve problem in AI space, which means in red area, AI is very easy to do, but in blue area, that's where AI should do. So, but I think that one of the three issues about industrial big AI is the big data, broken bad background. Data has many kinds, many difference. Sometimes you have data, but you forgot about the, the you collect data, I collect data, background different, the bad, and uh, then the, the data baseline is different. Eventually you don't know the background. Like, uh, you know, if I have a, a, a aircraft taking off, if I don't tell you the weather pattern, if I tell you the air density, water density, then you cannot really understand the fuel efficiency of an injection, right? I mean, the jet engine. So just know something about the combustion. It is not enough. So we, we need to understand the background. So we have a, a company have a lots of data, but sometimes when they collect it, they forgot to label them the background. So later on, the data are not useless, which means are not useful. So we, ha we have a question of a useful data. What's the usable data? Data are useful, but 
not useful because you did not label them properly. Like blood, do, uh, do, blood donation, you, blood is useful, but if, if you have HIV or other disease, the blood is not usable. So whatever, so eventually the data quality is very important because when you collect data from the field, well, first you have to evaluate if data is, can be diagnosed, detect something, then can be useful to diagnose something, then can be useful to predict something. So we have to do analysis, make sure data quality is good, useful, and useful. That's the first step normally we do, right? So we have lots of data. Now, how do you do data useful and useful? And then tool, AI, like I said, is a cognitive science. It's been there for a long time and many good success in uh, the, you know, the cases, but also has uh, some barrier and constraints that people don't kind of, they cannot depend on it. So eventually industrial AI, we need to have a systematic approach. You do, I do it, the same data set should be the same. So we can use the history data to train the system continuously rather to depend on the system uh, recalibration, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a very different perspective. For example, uh, in the traditional system, we depend on expert. Then expert system, we use our rule. Eventually a training system, AI, we train the system, but sometimes we have to recalibrate. But industrial AI should be dynamically retrain them based on the, the, the peer similarities and based on the previous cases. So I don't have to retrain them. So eventually there are many tools in the McKinsey report. I also served as senior advisor to McKinsey before. So there's a lot of tools we use, but if you look all the tool here and not just about deep learning, you have many good tools. We can categorize them to compare them like a random forest. It's very useful when you have, don't have enough knowledge, but if you don't have a, a good domain knowledge, sometimes the, the high dimensional space, you cannot solve it. So this table gives us a very good uh, chart. Now in FOSCON, when we do the journey, I'll quickly go through this. It's like we have 5G and the semiconductor EV and AI. And uh, we have a three step journey 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Eventually that three journey, we want to have an EV digital uh, health and robotics as a major driving industry. Then AI, semiconductor and 5G, 6G, our core technology. So that's where we are. And so eventually we have a lot of data. For example, we have 125,000 machine tools, 80,000 robots. So these are the great data rich environment for us to take them and to use it to prove we can do it internally before we serve other companies, right? So this is our backyard opportunity. Our backyard have a lot of data. So eventually we say, hey, well, machinery, we can predict before downtime, we can analyze why, and then we can avoid other systems before things happen. So we call worry-free system. So based on this philosophy, we uh, develop called the lighthouse factory, right? So we turn the lights off, not because we did it on purpose, but because we want to worry free. Worker don't have to worry about quality. So we have a, a we're building a, a uh, and right now we build 10 more, right? So we have a, a already seven and 10 more. So based on this, so this kind of factory uh, was selected for seven World Economic Forum Lighthouse in 2019 one of few is truly using AI as driver. And uh, later on, I think we can uh, also, uh, to use the example, for example, like a display glass. Uh, when you do the cutting glasses, we teach engineers to use it in uh, about a few hours, they can deploy them and achieve 98% accuracy. That's what we want. We want a very fast deployment and systematically, no surprise, right? So if that can be done, then that can give industry great confidence. So again, the three level, we train the people, we have to uh, understand the production system, we have to understand the management system, okay, how to find the data, how to use the data, how to use the tool, each level that different. So we need to train people to have lead the world capability and doing that through AI training. So this is the way we train people, uh, thousands of people in the, in the factory, we train them. And the uh, US, we also train them, engineer to use the system but this is our textbook, Industrial AI is published by Springer. Uh, of course, we have internal textbook, train the people as well. So with that, I will say I conclude my introduction. So this is a summary that ABC, AI, big data, cloud, those are the basic tools. Domain knowledge and evidence is our purpose. So we drive that ABC as a tool, DE is our purpose, right? You need evidence of improving. So with that, I could conclude my uh, briefing. Thank you very much. 
the World Knowledge Forum.